All right, I'm Andy Rodriguez with A Rodriguez Corp, and today I'm going to show you how to install a fluid amper on a BMW X5 35D. Uh, this is the E70 chassis, and um, it's pretty awesome. So the fluid amper is in this box. I'm going to show you how to start tearing the car down. Um, I've already put the lock pin in the engine. The first thing I did to do that was took a pair of pliers like this, <coughs> reached down here, Hold out the plug, and I'm going to overlay a video clip right now showing you how to install that pin. All right, All right real quick, I'm going to show you how to use this flex plate lock tool. This gets installed on the engine block. Uh, there's a hole right here. We're going to put the pin in here. push it through. Now it's important that the pin go through the flex plate. As you can see right now it is not locking the flex plate. So what you need to do is turn the engine over while pushing the pin and it's going to end up finding a hole that looks just like this. And that's how you use the flex plate lock tool. Next, we're going to start tearing down the engine. And we take out four 13 millimeter bolts for this cross brace. And after you get those four bolts out, you can pull the clip on this hose, it just pops up. And then it wiggles off. I'm going to set this brace out of the way. Now I've already prepped a few things to make life a lot easier and quicker on video. Um, it's really not that bad, but some things aren't conducive to the camera. Right now, there should be a boost hose going down here to the intercooler. It was not going to be possible to show you how that gets removed while it's in the car. So I went ahead and pulled out the intercooler. This is exactly how it would be installed on your vehicle right now. This goes up to the intake manifold. It has a clip here and a clip down here to take it loose. You can use a screwdriver or a pick. Personally, I like the pick. And more than one way to do it. I take the clip completely off. Before you put the pipe back on, you must install the clip. Install it 100%. When you go to put the boost pipe on, lubricate the o-ring or replace it and lubricate it still. And you push it in until you hear those rings snap. All right, so that's out of the way. Next we need to take out the fan. There's an electrical connection here going to the intake. There's another one for the fan right here. It's got a clip on each side. You release that. I'm going to take a long flat blade screwdriver and if you could take a look at this. You see right here there's a clip I'm pushing in. So I'm going to push in towards the front of the vehicle while I lift. I've got one side re released. Now I'm going to do the other side. And And the fan is free. So important feature on this is there's a hinge on the fan. You're going to want to flip that towards the front so you can have enough room to get this out. Alright, 
Now at this point, I'm gonna make life easier on myself. I was changing out the thermostat so the coolant's already been drained. I'm going to release this clip on this hose right here. This comes off and then I've got access to the belt pathway. That's real easy. Um, the old belts, I'm not reusing them. I just cut them off. Saves five minutes. So this is the stock pulley when you're installing a fluid amper that needs to be changed out. Now that we've got clear access to the alternator and the belt pathway, I'm going to go ahead and change out the pulley on the alternator. You're going to need a 24 millimeter pass-through socket tool. Uh, there's various types. This is what I happen to have today, right here. And you're going to need a T50 Torx and a way to hold that, which I'm just going to use a wrench. Now this is the same concept as normal, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I'm going to hold the center T50 and I'm going to turn down to turn left on the center nut of the alternator. loose. That was pretty easy. Pause. Alright, now we're going to install the new clutched pulley. Um, this is from INA and it does a huge improvement on reducing the vibrations that the alternator causes on the belt system. So first I'm installing the spacer and then goes the pulley. Just going to tighten it by hand first. Then we're going to stick the T50. No. Then we're going to stick the 33 point alternator socket in there and the T50 Torx. I've already set my torque wrench to, let's see, it is at. 60 foot-pounds, or should it's at 59. That's the spec provided by INA. And we're going to tighten that up until the torque wrench clicks. Okay. And that is it for the installation of the alternator pulley. All right, now that I've got the alternator pulley changed, I'm going to go ahead and take the stock damper off. I'm going to use an E12 for this. That's an inverted Torx 12 millimeter. There's four bolts on this. <clears throat> all right, now I'm just going to use the electric ratchet to take them all out. Over on my left shoulder and get a view from there. Uh, that's 
that's it. Now, if you look closely in here, you can see the rubber's starting to crack. This hasn't failed yet by any means, but it's going to. So, we're going to install the new fluid amper. And you buy it one from us, it includes a lifetime warranty. Going to install the new required stretch bolts. The old ones are garbage. I'm going to tighten these by hand first, make sure we don't end up with any issues like cross-threading. You can pause it. Alright, I've got those uh, four bolts installed all the way by hand. Now I'm going to torque them according to the instructions by Fluid Amper and BMW. We're going to go ahead and tighten that to 40 newton meters or 29 foot pounds plus an additional 120 um, degrees and that's going to give us our stretch um, on those bolts. So. Four. All right, now I'm going to put my 120 degrees on there. For those of you that aren't great with that, um, a half circle is 180 degrees, a quarter circle is 90. So we're going between that. And you don't need to use a torque wrench for your extra turn. down as slow as I can like that. If I come out to this angle, that's going to be 90 degrees. Okay. Put a little more on there. All right. I'll do that for the rest of them. And pause. All right, that's it for torquing the bolts on the fluid amper. Now I'm going to do the smart thing. We're going to put the tools down and we're going to get that lock out of the transmission holding the uh, engine lock to the flex plate. So I'm going to literally dive back here and wiggle that backwards and free. Lock tool is removed. Next, I'm going to put this pin back and we'll be all set to put the belts on. All right, next, we're going to install the serpentine belt, and I'm going to splice an image on this video showing you the diagram for doing that. All right, now that I've got the serpentine belt on everything except for the alternator, I'm going to go ahead and put the 19 millimeter socket on the tensioner. And I'm going to turn it down towards the passenger side of the vehicle. So loosen up the tensioner 
and slip the belt onto the alternator. And now I'm going to check the belt pass on all the pulleys. And all right, so now we're going to install the AC stretch belt, and the easiest way to do it is with the correct tool. Um, that is KT. 20444-1 there's probably also a BMW equivalent part number but um, since most of you don't have access to this tool I'm going to do it the other way um, we're going to need the stretch belt installer tool if you look at it it says remove and install obviously we're installing so I'm going to put it on the harmonic balancer so the install is facing the rear of the vehicle. I'm going to put the stretch belt on the AC compressor and I'm going to move the tool as far forward by hand as I can. Now, since most of you don't have that special tool for turning the crank, what we're going to do is put two E12s on the crank and rotate them both at the same time. If you do just one, you're going to put too much pressure on the bolts and you will over torque them. And that's it. All done. All right. Together and go have fun.